8.55 Eastern Time and Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. Among all the commemorations of Lincoln's birthday, perhaps the most appropriate was that of the Supreme Court, which re-emphasized the protection of the Bill of Rights in setting aside the convictions of four Florida Negroes sentenced to death for murder. They claimed that their confessions had been obtained by beating. Justice Black of Alabama, reading a unanimous opinion, said that, I quote, The courts stand as havens of refuge for those who might otherwise suffer because they are helpless, weak, outnumbered, or nonconforming victims of prejudice and public excitement. No higher duty, no more solemn responsibility rests upon this court than that of translating into living law and maintaining this constitutional shield deliberately planned and contrived for the benefit of every human being subject to our Constitution of whatever race, creed, or persuasion, end quote. Perhaps in response to President Roosevelt's criticism of Russia before the Youth Congress on Saturday, the Russian papers broke out today in a unanimous attack on America, though their criticisms were aimed not at Mr. Roosevelt, but at Vice President Garner, Congressman Dyes, and various private citizens. They repeated the argument that American capitalists are fattening on war trade, and one of them said that Under Secretary of State Wells, on his approaching trip to Europe, would be the traveling salesman of American imperialism, preparing the way for American entry into the war. While all Central Europe appears to be almost paralyzed by a cold wave that promises to be the worst in a hundred years, the war still goes on in Finland, with the Red Army attacking the Monarheim line today in great force at three points. The assault in the Summa sector, described by our correspondent Mr. Hartrich as the keystone of the line, continued for its twelfth consecutive day under cover of terrific artillery fire and bombing raids. But at the same time, Russian forces moving on the ice of Lake Ladoga and of the Gulf of Finland attempted to turn both flanks of the line. These attacks also were made in heavy force and supported by a long artillery barrage, but the Finns claim that they have all been repulsed and that 72 tanks were destroyed in the day's fighting. The neutrals suffered all the ship losses today. One Swedish and one Estonian freighter sunk, both by torpedoes. The crew of the Estonian ship was rescued by a Swedish collier, which was machine-gunned by German planes, but escaped. And another British trawler is reported sunk in last Saturday's air attack. Germany and Russia today signed a trade treaty, which, according to German expectations, as reported by Russell Hill from Berlin earlier this evening, will compensate for all the commerce Germany has lost by the blockade. Russian transportation will have to improve considerably before this hope is realized. The Germans will trade machinery and metal goods for oil, ore, and fodder. And one of the clauses provides that Germany will set up in Russia an oil refinery and a synthetic rubber factory and will teach the Russians how to run them. A contingent of Australian and New Zealand troops of unknown but apparently considerable size arrived in Egypt today and according to most reports is expected to strengthen the forces the Allies are keeping in the Near East in case of possible German or Russian attack this spring. It's possible, however, that these troops may eventually come to the Western Front, as their kinsmen did in the last war. This cold wave, freezing most of the inundated areas in the Netherlands clear to the bottom, would make an attack on that country easier if the Germans are contemplating it. In Japan, the 2,600th anniversary of the legendary founding of the Empire was celebrated by the Emperor with a rescript to his subjects, in general language, which did not, as some reports had forecast, put the imperial authority formally behind the present Chinese policy. General Hata, the war minister, admitted in the Diet today that the so-called China incident is likely to continue for years, and the tone of Japanese news stories from southeastern China bears him out. A week ago, these stories spoke of 150,000 Chinese troops encircled and trapped in the mountains. But instead of reporting the capture of this immense force, the Japanese dispatches now say that Japanese troops have abandoned captured positions and returned to their bases, letting the trapped Chinese go, it appears. It is now believed that the new Japanese-controlled Chinese government of Wang Xingwei will be proclaimed near the end of this month. It has been put off again and again since December. And General Hata said today that to meet the labor shortage in Japan, the army might, following Hitler's precedent with the Poles, import Chinese prisoners of war to do the work. Japan gave notice today that its treaty of arbitration and conciliation with the Netherlands would be terminated, but said there was no political motive and emphasized friendship for the Dutch. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.